When I can be so fierce and so successful, I'm not about the drama. Don't start none, I won't be none. Life is about choices, and I choose to when it comes to my family, I'm the judge. Yes, yes, oh! People get exhausted trying to figure me out, and I, I just let them. Welcome to the first segment of your favorite twins, Real Housewives of Atlanta Review. Season 7, Episode 1. I am your host, Brad Michael. And I am Brandon. And we are about to deliver you some of this juicy, juicy, juicy tea. So without further ado, I would like to say, um, you know, the, the new Real Housewives of Atlanta, I love it. It seems like it's about to be a real great episode. Um, the episode that happened Sunday, which was, I really liked it. Uh, shout out to you, Andy Cohen, for just giving us a cliffhanger because I cannot wait to the next episode. I would like to say that Cynthia um, is my new favorite housewife for, see, uh, for the episode one. Because it seems like she's just trying to open up a little bit more. It seems like she's not as boring as she used to, uh, as she used to be. And um, just, I guess because her and Nene not really friends no more. I feel like she just, just trying to be herself. And I like that about Cynthia. She's just not going with the wind. Because that's how she used to be. What do you think about Cynthia? Um, I actually really like her uh, this season. She's not so stuck. For uh, Nini's anal cavities. <laughs> she really isn't because I really like Cynthia and I met her many times and she's really sweet and I feel like she, now she's gonna blossom into this beautiful flower this season on Real Housewives of Atlanta. And I'm glad they're not talking about Bar One anymore. You know, it's closed down on Memorial Drive, it's not actually there anymore. It's actually on Auburn Avenue in, uh, in a sweet Auburn area in Atlanta where the old 253 Club used to be. That's where the new bar one is. I can't wait to go over there and visit and have some of that oxtail soup and all the rest of the, all yeah. rest of the great things. They have the uh, chicken food and isn't so high as it used to be. Yeah, because you get two chicken fingers and a waffle for nine dollars. But we ain't gonna talk about that. We're gonna wait till they open and then we're gonna figure it out again. But we ain't gonna talk about that. that right now. But okay, to the next housewife, Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore is still acting like she's depressed. She needs a storyline. She, she just, she just real. I don't know. Kenya just, she's a great person. She's very beautiful, despite of what everyone thinks of her. But she just doesn't really have nothing to talk about. Right? And she's like, I feel like I feel like Baby, look. She you you provoked the girl. You did have the boy and all in the girl face. She took right. that after she and she popped you with it, and you know you deserved it. <laughs> You did. Uh, yeah, she did. Like, you know, you don't provoke somebody to do something to you and then get mad. And play when victim. And play victim. Like, something about that is just so elementary. Like, Kenya, you need to grow up and right. come up with a storyline. Because after uh, the episode five, if you don't have nothing to talk about, every time you get on, I'm going to start closing my eyes. Because, the girl, I'm not going to see you. Sorry. Um, the <laughs> whole Pedro and Apollo incident, I would say that on social media, a lot of people were saying that Phaedra was wrong for not standing by her husband's side, for better or for worse. We all know the typical, you know, marriage thingy, shindig, or whatever. My thing is with the Phaedra and Apollo incident, I feel like Phaedra was right. Because Apollo is a grown adult, and every decision that he makes is not a reflection of Phaedra. You know, her name and their family. I feel like Apollo, as an adult, he should take actions. You know, he took actions for... What he did, and he also should have been thinking about his family while he was doing it. Don't wait until, you know, you hit rock bottom and then now all of a sudden, you know, like, I want my family. You should have been thinking about that when all you out there doing what you're doing. And, you know, I that's just, I, I, yeah, I know you agree because it's like the truth. And, you know, that's just how it is that man. Everybody want to be fabulous. Everybody want to be, you know, this, that, and a third. You know, living that typical lifestyle, you know, doing crap. Have a nice expensive car, you know, you have no platform, you know, the list goes on and on. So, shout out to you, Apollo, for, you know, about to do eight years, ten years, five years, whatever the case may be. Bink. And I definitely can say that uh, everyone want to be famous, but no one wants to so work. work. That's how it is out here, that's just a typical Atlanta lifestyle. Yeah. But I say, you know, you get up and you work and you make the best out of life, and that's what it is. And everything. But, um, Phaedra. My opinion, I say Phaedra wasn't wrong. She stood up for what she believed in, and she did have a name before uh, she met Apollo. And then Apollo said, "Well, you had everything, but you didn't have a wife. You didn't have a husband and kids." That's what he said. I'm like, oh. yeah, that was okay, a that was a little bit harsh. 
So you're not saying anything of any value, so I'm gonna end this conversation. <laughs> but I kind of think that Phaedra went and had a talk with K. Michelle, and K. K. Michelle told her, "You can't raise, raise a man. man." That's exactly what K. Michelle. You heard what I said, huh? Uh huh. K. K. Michelle went over. She called that. She said, "Pat, she said, girl, you can I need you to uh, go ahead and listen to my song. You can't raise a man. Phaedra took that to heat, honey, <laughs> and she didn't go ahead and went to that uh, Augusta Hotel. Okay. okay. All right, and our mother was there to help us. So it was, all, it was a setup. And down, um, shout out to Candy as well. She was real loyal. She was like, this she's is a good friend. friend. Yeah, she's, this is the face of loyalty. Right. I definitely can understand that by them both being couples and they're both friends. What they talk about is between them and not for not to the whole tell Todd or whatever. So yeah. shout out to Candy. That was real good of you saying that. And then another thing, Candy really stands up for Mama Joyce, baby. Mama Joyce can burn down the house and she say, don't play with my mama. That's my mama. She and love her mama. And not only do she love her mama, she, she love, love her mama. man. Oh, man, 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 she, man. And she love her money. Her, her money. Her man, her man and her, her mama. mama. And her money. Yes. Yes. And you not going to play with Miss Candy, mama, money, or man. Yes. That's what Didi said last episode, girl. I tell you, I fell out. And uh, oh, speaking yeah. of Nene, I love Nene. She is one of my favorite housewives since season uh, one. Her, uh, Deshaun, you know, season one when she first started Candy. I'm going to say um, Nene had her brown hair. And I, what I like about Nene is she started <laughs> from the bottom and then she worked her way up to the top. You know, she didn't step on nobody's toes. She worked for everything that she has. And that's what I like about Lanethea. Shouts out to you, Nene. We Nini love you. Girl. That's my little thing she be doing. I love you, girl. Um, so the new housewives. Let's talk about them. Oh, Miss Claudia Jordan. Um, you may know her from the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, or also Celebrity Apprentice. And I think she got fired from the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. But anyway, she told Nene, um, "That's why you're so bad." This is coming from someone that's on Broadway. I don't think she's bothered by you at all. And then Claudia Jordan, I mean, you just stepped on the show. I don't know if you're trying to get, like, these big, bogus storylines. But, girl, if you want to keep your job, I suggest that you not come for Lalithia. Because it's not going to be cute for you, Miss Thing. Then he's going to say, are you singing for me by bus or by plane? (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) But also, uh, Claudia is also opening up about her also wanting to commit suicide. So we're going to uh, definitely keep y'all posted about that story on Real Housewives of Atlanta yeah, exactly. this week. And we also have Demetria McKinney. She's also going to be joining the show, um, House of Pain, Demetria McKinney. So definitely um, check that out. Stay posted with the season. Okay, so uh, uh, just overall, the, uh, the first episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta it was really juicy. And I can't wait to dig into it a little bit more. I just want to welcome y'all to the first segment of Your Favorite Twins. Um... You know, I uh, review, and I am Brad Michael, and I'm Brandon. Uh, but before we go, who is your favorite housewife of this week? Who did you say? Cynthia Bailey. And who was your least favorite? I would say Kenya, cause she didn't talk about nothing. All she did was cry and they made my nerves bad. Yeah, and she's bitter, like unsweet tea. And I'm definitely want you to get sweetened up this season, have fun, live a little, and once wow, again, oh, you have a little bit, baby. Right, and you have all these other. Actress jobs going on because she always say. Hopefully so. she don't try to come out with a movie. <laughs> I'm Brandon and I am Brad Michael and we are your, your favorite twins. Twin. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. That's at y o u r f a b o r i t e t w i n z. That's your favorite twins. My personal Instagram is at forever f o r e v e r b r a d. M I C H E A L. And mine is at Brand Cinco, B R A N C I N C O. And we are your favorite twins, honey. Can't wait to see y'all next episode. Love y'all! <laughs>